Every day, millions of friendly Americans, young and old, in millions of American homes, large and small, pause and refresh themselves with the wholesome, delicious goodness of ice-cold Coca-Cola. And today, Christmas Day, the Coca-Cola Company and your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola invite you to pause and be refreshed by an hour of wholesome, delightful entertainment. We now bring you Walt Disney and his beloved characters in their world television premiere. I have an important meeting with the junior hot rodders. Well, we've been invited to a tea party at the Walt Disney Studio. A tea party? Yes. Holy mackerel. I thought that stuff went out with the bustle. Oh, Charlie. Now, I'm sorry, Bergen. I can't make it. Why can't you make it? Well, I've, uh, I busted the string on my tea bag. Oh. Walt wants you to meet a very pretty young English girl. Yeah? Yes. She's the voice in Alice in Wonderland. No. And she's been asking about you. Once I make up my mind, she's been asking about me? Yes. Oh, no. Yes. She has really? Sure enough? Yes, yes. Well, you know how girls are. <laughs> yeah. What do you say, Charlie, huh? What do you say? No, no, Bergen. If you think you can change my mind with a cute little girl... Yes? You got the right boy. Yes. Yeah. I never told you the story of Alice in Wonderland, have I? Uh, no, I've been lucky so far. Well, once upon a time, here we go. There was a child named Alice. She was a little girl. Say, you have done research, haven't you? One summer day, she was seated on a riverbank. And she began to feel drowsy. Well, she should have watched where she was sitting. Or did you say drowsy? Yeah, I gonna look. Bergen, watch, watch that white line. Oh, yes, that white line. Yeah. Where did that come from? Oh, just some ice cream truck with its vanilla dragging. Yeah. Well, now to continue with my story. If you feel you must. Alice was seated there when who should come along but a white rabbit dressed in a waistcoat and wearing a gold watch and chain. You saw a rabbit with a gold watch? No, no, no. Alice saw him. Oh. For a moment, I thought your old trouble was coming back on you. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Did we lose something? No, on the contrary, we now have five fenders. <laughs> well, anyway, to go on, uh, the rabbit was hopping along when all of a sudden he popped down a nearby rabbit hole. And without thinking, Alice popped right in after him. Yeah. Now, what do you think of that? Well, Pop, I'd say good riddance. Yeah. Young man, I may not go on with this story. May we count on that? Yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, I'll go on. Oh, why not? The whole day is lost up anyway. <laughs> Suddenly, Alice found herself falling down a well. And where do you think she landed? Well, now, this is just a wild guess, mind you, but could it be at the bottom? Yeah. 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 And she looked around in the well, and she saw a three-legged table. And on the table was a bottle with the words, drink me. So Alice drank it right down. Well, I'll say one thing for Alice. That kid will try anything once. Oh, Oh, 
no, that did it. Oh. What's the matter, Mortimer? Car sick? No, I'm sick. Oh. <laughs> well, after Alice finished the drink, oh my goodness, she saw a little caterpillar smoking a Turkish water pipe. Yeah. Wait a minute. A caterpillar smoking a pipe? Well, why not? Yeah, yeah, why not? That's what I say. I'll buy that. But you know that rabbit with the gold watch? That's a little hard to take. <laughs> Now, in the distance, she heard a noise. Now, what do you think it was? Well, offhand, I'd say it was the little man in the white coat out looking for Alice. No, no. It was the Mad Hatter and the March Hare, and they were having the most wonderful tea party. <laughs> yeah. Hey, thank you. I think I'll go below until this thing blows over. Well, Charlie, we're at the gates. The, the pearly gates? No, no, at Disney's. Oh, I never thought we'd live to see it. So you see, this is the result of being a good boy for 30 years. Santa finally came across. See the little throttle in there? See that thing there? This up here, this is the... Uh, oh, 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 look at this thing. <laughs> you want it on the telephone. Oh, thanks, honey. Yeah? A little louder. It's kind of noisy in here. Mr. Bergen, Mr. McCarthy, Mr. Snurd. Oh, send them right in. Hey, kids. They're here. Oh, oh. Wow, what a mob. Hi, you guys and gals. Hi, Hi Charlie. Charlie. Hi, Arthur. How do you do? Glad you can make it, boys. Oh, I want you to meet your hostess. This is Catherine Beaumont. She's the voice of Alice in Wonderland. Yeah. Well, what goes with the voice isn't so bad either. I'm never so glad to meet you, Charlie. I've heard so much about you. Well, how fascinating. Tell me more about me. <laughs> oh, Charlie. <laughs> Look, sis, why don't we slip away from this fish fry and go somewhere? I happen to know of an intimate little soda thing. Oh, can't, Charlie. Uh, can't do that. Besides, I'd like you to meet somebody. His name is Bobby Driscoll, and he's in movies. Bobby? My mind's next. Hurry up. Hi, Charlie. <laughs> oh, hello, chum. So you want to be an actor, huh? Well, take my advice, bud, and give it up. Uh, you'll never make the grade. The boy hasn't got the face. He hasn't got it. Oh, okay. Charlie. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Oh, no. Bobby won an Academy Award for his acting in So Dear to My Heart and The Window. Oh, he did, eh? Well, of course it's all right if you like talent. <laughs> so, as I was saying, uh, me and Grandpa uh, raised milk and eggs. And then we got uh, uh, 40 acres planted in corn, you see. Yeah. Well, that's the way it goes. Ventriloquism is, is the art of throwing the voice. I fool lots of people with it. You make your voice appear to come from different places. Sit down, I'm going to be comfortable. Oh, huh? thank you all. Now in... <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know he was there. Donald, you're supposed to be downstairs. What are you doing up here? I'll bring him back. You get down and get to work. You know, make some drawing run. Uh, Donald seems to be losing a little weight, doesn't he? I don't get it. <laughs> well, you see, at this studio, they'll take a voice and draw a character around it. Well, that's the silliest thing I ever heard. Imagine taking a voice from one person and, and putting it into... Uh, what am I saying? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, anyway. Uh, girls, did I ever tell you about my experience uh, big game hunting in Africa? No. no. Are there still uh, dame hunting in Coney Island? <laughs> Oh, Mr. Disney, uh, everyone's here now. How about that surprise you promised? Okay, Kathy. Hey, everybody, attention. Now comes the big surprise. Oh. It all started a good many years ago when I was traveling through Europe. I happened to meet a fairy princess who had a cousin who used to work here at the studio. Now, she put me on to this wonderful magic mirror, and I was finally able to buy it, and I brought it back here to the studio. Mr. Disney, you mean the wonderful magic mirror that belonged to the Wicked Queen in Snow White is... It's behind this curtain? It is. Now you watch. Now you kids help me with the magic words. Bibbidi! Bobbidi! Oh. Will it really do magic, Mr. Disney? Oh, sure. I'm a little rusty, though. You try it. 
Oh, slave in the magic mirror, come from the farther space. How hammy can you get? Hey, do you girls know this character, Disney? Yes, he's our father. Uh, oh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> don't worry, don't worry, I'll get him. Oh, slave in the magic mirror, come from the farther space. <laughs> Through wind and rain and hail I summon thee. Let me see your face. <laughs> This mirror, it can produce the past, the present, and the future. Anything, just anything at all. From time and distance, from sky and sea, what master wishes herein shall be. Ah, uh, malarkey. That's probably some kind of a hopped up television set. Television. Television! <laughs> Steady, old boy. Take it easy. Television! Ha! Ah! I have never been so insulted in all my unborn days. Mr. Disney, do you think the magic mirror would do something for me? It's your party, Catherine. Oh, slave in the mirror, anything Catherine wishes is okay with me. If that is thy wish, master. on the wall. It's something that I remember and something I would so much like to hear and see again. Well, what is it, child? It's the happy song of the seven dwarfs in their little cottage when they give a party for Snow White. Young mistress speaks. I hear it well. Behold, now works the magic spell. <laughs> Lovely, Mr. Mirror. Thank you. Nothing, really. And done, may I add, without the aid of vulgar knobs, tubes, and aerials. Okay, no knobs. Maybe it's on a level, and maybe it isn't. Uh, Charlie? Yeah? Oh, certainly, Dreamboat. I've made a few movies, but I couldn't ask. I'm too modest. But coax me, though. Ah, uh, come on, Charlie. Oh, pretty, uh, please. <gasps> that's enough, that's enough. Okay, magic boy, let's see how good you really are. What is it, son of the sapling? <laughs> yep. I'll ignore that. Hey, can you show us a certain talented young actor, loaded with charm, and a rascal with the ladies? I see. Now, this delightful, uh, but underpaid young fellow, is known and loved the world over. And you desire me to show this, um, this famous young actor in a scene from one of his early successes? That's the substance of it, yeah. It shall be done. Oh, minions of time in the universe, Again, create the scene. We see a famous young actor. We see a great clock tower. Wasn't that interesting, Charlie? I would rather not discuss it, please. And uh, that was the year the raspberry crop failed. Well, personally, I would uh, rather raise pigs. You don't have to hold pigs. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, Bobby, what do you remember best? Well, Kathy, 
I guess as long as I live, I'll always remember the Br'er Rabbit stories and the great and wonderful man who told them, Uncle Remus. Yes, that's right, Bobby. Uncle Remus was about the most wonderful teller of animal stories that ever lived. Do you think I could... Oh, why, yes, go ahead and ask him. Mr. Mirror, would you? A pleasure. From out the dim and happy years, comes the magic voice from a distant shore. There speaks, and in the gentle tones, Br'er Fox, Br'er Bear, Br'er Rabbit, live once more. <laughs> there ain't no place that far. Charming. Now, now, Oh, Mr. Mirror, I'm afraid we've been overworking you. Let's pause for a little refreshment. Thank you, child. Don't mind if I do. For all to see, for all to have, beyond mere price or measure. Now, over there, look on this fair, this rare, this simple treasure. Yes, friends, one of the treasures of everyday living is the delicious, wholesome goodness of Coca-Cola. While Walt and his friends pause to refresh themselves, may we suggest that ice-cold Coke, right from your own refrigerator, is perfect refreshment for you and your guests. During the holiday season and throughout the year, keep plenty of Coca-Cola on hand. Then you will always be ready for anyone who drops in. For where there's Coke, there's hospitality. Delicious, most refreshing. Oh, where was I? Oh, yes. From the hidden mists of time, past and future, all are same. Do but ask, and I will bring thee here within this frame. <laughs> well, that, that was pretty good, that was. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Now, we mustn't forget you. No. Isn't there something nice you remember? No, 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 thank you. No. Oh, Mortimer. No, no, no. Oh, please no. tell me. Mm. No, I thank you. No, thank you. No. Now, look, now, look mm. Mortimer, you mustn't be afraid of people. No. Uh... Goodness, I'm only a girl. Yeah, well, that's the worst kind. Oh, boy, she ain't gonna catch me. Oh, no, that's all right. No. Look, if you remember something wonderful, uh, the magic mirror will bring it back for you. Well, I ain't much on remembering. I sort of make up my thinking as I go along, sort of. Oh, I, I see. Yeah. Well, then, wouldn't you like to hear something? Some mm. little story? No, thank you. No, I don't think I'd be interested. Oh, aren't you sure? No, I don't. Oh, go ahead. Well, all right. Uh, but no mushy stuff, huh? Oh, all right, I then. don't want no, uh, <laughs> no kissing. <laughs> oh, no, I don't want that. Right. Oh, no. Can you handle that, Mr. Mirror? Uh, Roger. I mean, uh, yes, young mistress. A tale I'll tell, a hero bold who never causes blushes. He fights and schemes and dares and dreams, but never, never mushes. Tis morning now, our hero wakes. Tis blue. Uh, well, I rather enjoyed that. It's amazing what they can do with mirrors these days. <laughs> Catherine, have you asked Mr. Bergen yet? No. Uh, Mr. Bergen, is there anything you would like to see in the magic mirror? Well, thank you, Kathy. Yes, um, I'm interested in something in the present. Uh, Walt, you have a group of young men in your studio. By day, they're artists, but at night, they become the most famous new band in the country. Firehouse 5 plus 2. Oh. I've danced to their music at night, and now I'm curious. Can the magic mirror show them at their daytime job? Sure. But Edgar, I like to say this about the boys. They never let their music interfere with their work. Well, you watch. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Show the hardest workers here of all. The time is present. Now through this wall, come thou with me down near my hall and see what master fondly calls the hardest workers here of all. Marty. Hey, Marty. 
See if Walt's around. All clear. Dear boys, you look great. Signed, Walt. Walt. Walt! The magic mirror. Look, Walt, I finished that Tweedledee and Tweedledum scene. Oh! Tweedledum and Tweedledee. Isn't that from Alice in Wonderland? No. You can't see anymore. That's top secret stuff. Jeepers. And I thought maybe we were going to get to see some Alice in Wonderland. Well, it isn't finished yet, you know, Bobby. And besides, we haven't put the color in. And, uh... oh. and further, if thou wilt vouchsafe me a mortal expression, I'm getting a little pooped. Be a good guy, Mr. Mirror. Just let us see a little Alice in Wonderland. Please? Please, Mr. Mirror. Please, Mr. Mirror. Well, just this once. But I want you to know it isn't easy. Oh, great mystic portents of the universe. Oh, Alpha and Omega. Do but lift the veiled curtain of the future. Revealing that which now is not, but soon, soon will be. And now... <laughs> wasn't it a wonderful day, Charlie? Yeah, Ducky. Real Ducky. And wasn't it nice of Walt to lend me his magic mirror? Yeah. Now I'll be able to see that you do your homework every night. Oh, oh. that's dandy, just real dandy. <laughs> Good night, Charlie. Yeah. Good night, Bertie. Uh, yeah. You stool pigeon. 
Yeah, it's worth seven years' bad luck. Ah, my trusty slingshot. Good night, Charlie. Hey, wait a minute. Nothing talks like hush money. Maybe I can grease this guy. Oh, Mikey Mirror. Oh, big wheel. Come on out. Let's discuss a deal. Is there anything I can do for you, bud? Why are there? Oh, no. Deal's off. Yep. That's the way it goes. <laughs> The Coca-Cola Company and your Coca-Cola bottler hope your Christmas day has been a pleasant and memorable one and bring you best wishes for the entire holiday season. Remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes and ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. Now, to make this Christmas Day complete, may we suggest that you and the entire family visit your favorite theater tonight to enjoy one of the many fine movies playing in your city. In 1951, look for Walt Disney's feature-length Technicolor production, Alice in Wonderland.